everyone, welcome to Connected and welcome to April. We are already starting the fourth month of 2019. I hope you remember every day and every night to be thankful, whether times are being easy and smooth or difficult and shaky. It is important to maintain a grateful attitude. Only good things bloom from it. I am Fabiana Espinosa and I am for sure grateful to be here, grateful for you, for my team, for all the amazing guests I have had so far this year and for the ones to come. I am talking to you from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. Remember that if you are in Bolivia, you see us through the Abby Ayala channel. And if you're not, or you would like to recommend the show to somebody that is anywhere in the world, they can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and later on when the show is over on our YouTube channel. into the world of cosplay. We might have heard, seen, and even some of us have experienced some kind of interaction with this subculture. But what exactly is cosplay? Derived from the words costume and play, it is essentially dressing up as a fictional or non-fictional character or person from film and television, comic books, anime, and video games. Cosplay is considered an art form because it is an artistic expression that empowers individuals as they transform into different characters. There are two levels to cosplay, those who just dress up and those who design and create their own costumes. Today, I invited Dan Cattell, who is not only a cosplayer but also the inventor of Cospix. Have you heard about it? Before we connect with Dan, let's meet him. Dan Cattell is a Cinnaminson, New Jersey local artist. Graduated from Rockers, his best known works are from a costume series he has dubbed Cospix. This is a portmanteau of the words cosplay and pixel. They have been featured twice in Nintendo Power magazine as well as all over the web. It is my pleasure today to introduce Dan Cattell. He is talking to us all the way from New Jersey in the US. Welcome to Connected, Dan. Thank you for taking the time to share this time with you. Let's go with the first question. And I really want to know, before you started working on your creations, what was your life? What was going, what was going on? What were your interests? Um, I was going to Rutgers for uh, computer animation at the time. Um, I had been studying arts in colleges for a few years before that. And uh, in general, I was interested in how things move. Um, I was interested in science. And uh, um, yeah, that, that just kind of led me into, uh, uh, I, I, I'd been going to conventions uh, because I liked nerdy things. And uh, I wanted to come up with a costume that was something that nobody had, had ever seen before. And um, that's sort of how I landed on it, combining my interests uh, to see if something that I like would be something that other people would like as well. Right, so you were into art, but also you were into video games, right? Right, yeah. And uh, from those, because I've seen your work and you, it's like the old school, it's like from, the, from before. Tell us about what were your favorites, what you used to like to do? Um, for my favorite video games? Yes. Uh, I uh, I was definitely inspired by Super Metroid. Uh, that's uh, factored into a lot of my costumes so far. Um, I grew up with Sonic the Hedgehog and uh, the Mario games and Zelda, and all those were big influences on me. Right. So, well, you were into arts and also into games, and that's how you got into cosplay, right? But 
not only you started to uh, participate activity, but you created your own, which is actually the Cospex. So tell us, what is it and how did you come up with it? The Cospex are an original idea that I came up with. Um, I wanted to combine uh, paper puppets, which is like a two-dimensional puppet, with uh, body puppets, which is a uh, full-size puppetry that you do on your own body. Um, sort of like Big Bird in Sesame Street. Um, and it was something that I hadn't seen anyone else do before. And it was something that I could do cheaply, which was important to me because I was in college at the time. Uh, I didn't have a lot of funding to do it. But I knew that I could use my creativity to make up for that. And it was something that I was able to hand paint on cardboard and get this two-dimensional optical illusion uh, that made it look like it jumped right out of a video game. That is something that really caught my attention when I started like to, to look to go through your work is that I thought you kind of printed out all of like the image right. and you kind of put it on the cardboard. But then when I saw it, you actually paint, <laughs> like right. hand painted. So tell us about the process. How long does it take? And also since when you started uh, working on this project? Right. Um, a lot of people think that it's uh, print had felt they were printed for um, when they see them. Uh, I guess that's because we're living in a more digital world now, and people just assume that things are uh, you know mass manufactured like that. Um, but I, uh, what I had to do was um, compare the original art to my own uh, size and proportions to get the joints to match up. And then I had to come up with a pixel to uh, inch ratio. Uh, and then the entire uh, character was uh, paint by numbers after I made that giant grid. Um, just recently, I started uh, testing out printed costumes uh, because I want to be able to sell them to other people and let everyone else join in on the fun. It is fun to see them because like when you see a picture, it like you can, you think that it's a, it's something photoshopped, <laughs> right. you kind of like placed um, just the image on top of a pic of a of a photo. But when you turn and you see it that you did it handmade, I mean, what was the, how was exact the creation? Tell us, tell us a little bit about your creative process in order to project the pixel on, on the on the big picture. Right. Um, yeah, so about that, that turn, uh, there's uh, sort of an issue that I was having recently, uh, well, for a long time. I've been doing these costumes for nine years since 2010 was my first oh, one. And uh, when I show people photos of the costumes, they think that it's just an animation because they know I'm an animator uh, or they think that I'm, I'm photoshopping it. And I had to explain it for a while before they understand, uh, if they ever understand, but it wasn't until recently that uh, everybody started having uh, high definition video cameras on their phones uh, that the videos of the costumes were able to proliferate around on the internet. Um, so I guess technology finally caught up to be able to show my costumes what they truly are when I'm able to do the, the turn motion. And uh, you can see that it's actually me inside. Right, that's the cool part. <laughs> Tell us about uh, the experience about having your creations feature on Nintendo and all over the web. Oh, that was really exciting to me. Uh, they contacted me in 2011 the first time to put me in the Nintendo Power magazine, uh, which was a dream for me. Uh, Nintendo Power. Nintendo Congratulations. Power Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Nintendo Power Magazine started uh, the same time I was born uh, in July 1988 and uh, I always felt a kinship with it a little bit and um, they brought me on once more for the one of the final issues of the magazine and uh, yeah, they, they just brought me on another book last year uh, when the Super Nintendo Mini was coming out. And uh, that was called uh, Playing with Superpower. They interviewed a whole bunch of different fans who did uh, different Super Nintendo related artwork. 
That's so cool. And uh, tell us a little bit about the characters because you have uh, some from Metro and you have also Yoshi. Tell us a little bit about each of them. How do you pick or how do you choose which one and how long does it take you to make the best of you can with them? Um, let's see. Uh, I started with the uh, I started with the Chozo from Super Metroid as my first one. Uh, I like the aliens uh, characters and things that are a little bit less humanoid, and um, I, I kind of like the idea of masking my form so that you can't tell that I'm a person. Um, and then after that, I did the lead character from Metroid, uh, Samus Aran. Uh, she's like one of the oldest women in video games back from 1986. Um, uh, after that I did Ridley, which is a big purple dragon. He was 10 feet tall. Um, <laughs> and uh, let me ask you about this one. This okay. one also moves or is it's just the image, like big one? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's all in pieces and it was mobile. Uh, but, okay. I, didn't, I didn't get it as mobile as I planned it to be. So I want to return back to it at some point to, to do it better. Um, I was a little bit discouraged from doing it though because I brought it to a convention and uh, they kicked him out. Uh, they said that the crowd forming around him was a fire hazard. No way! <laughs> yeah, so it, it was interesting but uh, it was a lot of work to get kicked out. Right. But I got, he got to be there for a few hours. Right, and then what, which, what, what, what other ca character you work with? Um, uh, after that, I did Error from The Legend of Zelda, uh, I did Yoshi, uh, I did the Space Pirate from Super Metroid, um, and then I did a, a red version of him uh, to test out my uh, printing costumes. Um, and just this last week, I did another costume that hasn't been unveiled yet. It's for a, a music video for a Romanian musician named Smiley. Uh, oh, cool. and and hopefully that music video is going to come up in the next three months or so. Awesome. So it has been nine years since you started from your first. Right. Uh, th there's another one I, I forgot. Uh, just last year I got to do uh, a Minecraft costume for an official event at the Franklin Institute. So how many you have so far? You just said like you just oh. mentioned eight different characters, yeah. I think. Yeah, that and then tell me about, let's say you go, you prepare for this, um, for for to go to the to the comic cons different in different places. Um, how is the the connection? How is the interaction with the with the pe with the people that attend with the attendees? Yeah, I, I get all kinds of different interactions. Uh, some people are surprised; uh, they think that I'm just a prop standing up or they think there's some kind of robot inside until they uh, come around to the front and then see me. Uh, lately, in the last year or two, uh, there's a lot more people who know who I am. They've seen my work online or they recognize me from previous events. And uh, that's been kind of interesting to be involved in like that. Tell me, what other type of activities you have had since you started uh, sharing and showing your creations? Uh, I've I've been invited to some conventions, uh, and that that's been fun to be a special guest like that. Um, I might be doing some international traveling, hopefully soon. Uh, that remains to be seen, but I, I might be going to some interesting places uh, to be a performer. Right, because this community is huge, and you guys are all over the world. Then. All right, you say, okay, you have the need and you want to have the vision, you want to start a project. How long does it take you since you get your cardboard and you start working until it's completely done? Right, I, I used to spend, um, it's hard to say, but um, maybe like half a year uh, planning, uh, not, not every single hour of every day, but um, I like to think about it a little bit and then just put it on the back burner and think about it a little more. And uh, some of the projects take a long time. Uh, there's some that I've been working on for years in my head, uh, just trying to figure out the, the, the details of it. Like there's one project I've been trying to do that it makes a, a bicycle pixelated and incorporating that into the costume. And that's very challenging. But um, 
I, I can do them very fast now that I'm able to print them. Uh, I can do them within a week or so. Right, it does take time. Well, we are gonna go to a fast cut and we're gonna be right back with the last question. Please hold then and people at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Connected. Welcome back, Connected people. We are still connected with Dan Cattell, who is talking to us all the way from New Jersey in the US. Dan, I love to see your work. Really, it is so cool. And not only because you know, these are the kind of like, we see so many different characters nowadays on cosplays and just on video games, but seeing the ones that we used to see back in the days, you know, the ones we grew up this, it with is just, is the coolest thing for me. Then tell us a little bit about how do you see the future? What do you think is next for you and your creations? Right, uh, so the next immediate thing that I'm trying to do is make these designs available for other people to buy. Uh, I'm going to start sending them out to people uh, as an item that they can purchase from me. Uh, beyond that, I'm uh, on the artistic side of things, I'm considering uh, cartoon characters and how I can bring other types of two-dimensional things into this optical illusion. Right, and um, so when you create, like when you do your creations, is it just you, the whole process from beginning to end? Um, I, I'm the main designer, but I like to have uh, feedback from my artist friends. Uh, I like to ask them what they think, what they'd like to see, um, how to solve little problems that maybe I'm having trouble solving. Um, I used to have friends helping me painting or doing uh, some of the work when I don't have enough time to. Uh, right. But yeah, I'm, it, it, it's mostly me doing the designing, but uh, I do get a lot of help from friends. Well, because if you're going to start getting like maybe some orders and people ordering from you, it's kind of like, that's what I'm thinking. Like, how are you going to manage? Because you might need some extra help. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be challenging, but uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to be able to pull through. Have you been asked ever to give a workshop or have you taught maybe like in a different way to, to somebody? Yeah, um, I've, I have been asked to do a workshop or a panel uh, on it um, by several people. And I kind of dismissed it, but people keep asking me. So I think I might, uh, I might try to do that somewhere. Dan, thank you so much for the time you took to spend with us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little space so you can greet the audience and just, you know, share your social media and also if you'd like to see a, say a message. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm really glad that you love my work. It means a lot to me. My uh, social media is uh, Dan Cattell Art. Uh, on Instagram, it's D-A-N underscore C-A-T-T-E-L-L -L underscore A-R-T. Um, yeah, I hope you'll ch uh, check it out. And I post some of my time-lapse videos of paintings and uh, costumes in motion and some other art projects that I like to do. All right, Dan. I wish a lot of success for you. And a uh, big kiss until New Jersey. Oh. Always be well. Until next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. So there you go. Let's support Dan's work by following him on his social media. Whether you are into cosplays or not, his work is admirable. I will come back in a week with a new topic and a new friend. Nominate a person you love, you admire, or somebody you would like to support by writing me an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Let's get in touch and let the world know about them. Stay connected and until next time with me, goodbye.